This is a very quick and informal video to describe a different way of looking at why engineering for the web works the way it does. What I'd like you to consider is how your software gets into the hands of the customer. Now, traditionally with packaged software of old, that involved a purchase. Um, Microsoft, for instance, you, you might uh, buy a new computer that's got a particular version of Windows on it, or you might go and buy a shrink-wrapped copy of Windows, or if you're a company, you may agree for a, a license for a particular version of some software. And so the vendor releases the software, and you've bought it. And then the vendor goes away, and they're working away, and they release their next version. But you've still got the previous one, so they're still having to maintain that previous version that you've bought as well as their current version. And then they release another version later on, and now they're re maintaining their, their newest version as well as maintaining customers on their oldest versions. And so potentially you can have this situation where as a vendor, you could have customers on any or all of these previous versions. So if you think about Microsoft Windows, Windows XP was released in 2001, I think it was. End of life on support of it was, I believe, earlier this year. So for 13 years, Microsoft was having to do support for Windows XP. For many of those years, they weren't wanting to sell Windows XP because they were wanting to sell Vista or Windows 7 or Windows 8 or Windows 8.1 or Windows 8.1 Update 1. And so that's not necessarily a great situation for the software vendor to be in. But if you think about it, for the web, you control when the user gets the next version. Their browser makes a request to your server and at that point it sends up some HTML, some JavaScript and they are interacting with whatever version is on your server at that time. Or if it's a native app you can push an update out to people's apps. Assuming there's not security changes, assuming they approve the, approve the update. Uh, but so that means that you'll have your current version and then when you release your next version, you're transitioning all your users onto the latest version. And you release the next version, and they're all on the latest version. So instead of having to maintain previous versions and persuade people to buy and persuade people to upgrade, you're in a position where you are developing pieces of business value, and you are controlling when those end up in the hands of your customers. And so then the question becomes, here you are and you've got this idea for a feature and you think there's value in this feature for your product and you develop it. Why would you wait to put that feature into the hands of your customer and realize business value from it? Why would you wait for some other features that haven't been developed yet? And realistically, that means that you are now in a position of trying to optimize the process of getting functionality from the production process, your team coding it, into the hands of your customers. And so the process you might end up end up with is wanting to automate all of the bits of it that you can because there's no longer this barrier of having to make an upgrade sale, having to persuade the customer that they want to take it. Um, and so you might end up finding that you start off with a user story, uh, which is where, for instance, the product manager and the team are getting together, trying to work out, OK, what do we think is going to be useful to build? And that might be described at a fairly high level. It might get workshopped. And, and so together, collaboratively, they come up with this idea of the functionality they're going to build. And that gets built. It gets coded. It gets designed. It gets tested. And in this case, the test is automated. Why is the test automated? Well, the trouble is, as soon as you change some code in your product, you want to know that everything is working well. So you want to make sure that not just that new feature you've tested is still working, but that all the old features are too. If you are doing your tests manually, then as your product grows, all that manual testing of it, everything could take a very, very long time. And it could be a barrier. Uh, it could be getting in the way of getting this functionality out and realizing business value from it quickly. So instead, we automate the tests so that when we submit our code and our design, some tests go with it, and then we can check that everything's working automatically. We just get a server to automatically see, all right, someone's pushed a change here. Let's go and test everything and make sure it hasn't broken everything. 
Typically, you might then use something like a pull request. Oops, pardon, the uh, <coughs> order went slightly wrong on the animation there. But so you might use a pull request as to this code now going from your development team into the trunk, the main line of development. And that pull request is an opportunity for code review. This is an opportunity for the engineering team in charge of the product to decide, is this feature, is this code high enough quality that it won't degrade our product and make it less maintainable. So that is, if you like, a, a quality barrier um, to the code going in in order to make your um, product stay maintainable and stay successful. And then it goes through to deployment. And there might well be a deployment manager who is doing a bit of sanity checking, making sure that um, So every so often he might be going, OK, we're going to do another deployment. Maybe he does it on Mondays and Thursdays. And, OK, we're going to do another deployment. Let's just quick sanity check that we know everything automatically tested OK. Let's just also check that it, it kind of runs in case there's anything that the automated test didn't pick up. Yep, all good. All right, press the button. Automatically, that um, goes from the, the test server out into production. But so in this case, the only parts, if you like, the only hurdles that this functionality is passing, uh, is having to go through, are the ones that really are about human judgment. First of all, your team's judgment about what do we want to design here, done collaboratively. And then the pull request happens and the, uh, the gatekeepers for quality are making a judgment on whether this code is, is good enough or if it's problematic. And then in deployment, the deployment manager is just making a, a very quick kind of judgment based check that, oh, yes, OK, we haven't totally destroyed everything. And it goes straight out. So th in that case, there's, there's very little between you developing a feature and getting it out to the uh, to the customer. So sorts of things you might need for that distributed version control system. So there's the system for managing the code. Uh, continuous integration, which is a originally a way of talking about getting the software developers on a team to regularly share their work with each other, um, but is also used as a phrase for this server that uh, every time it sees that uh, a change is being committed, goes and runs all of the tests automatically. And there can be lots and lots of things that you can hang off that continuous integration. You can get it to do static analysis and uh, come up with dashboards of how this affects code quality, whether there's code duplication, all sorts of interesting things that you can put into that automated step. And then continuous deployment. If, if So long as everybody's happy with it, it goes out to the customer. So that's kind of a different way of looking at it that is based off um, Instead of theories about how long are we building things that we're not supposed to be building, how long are we building the right thing, the wrong thing, how well documented are things, it's basically a, a question of how can we optimise this process of getting functionality out to the customer. Thing to notice with it is that, as I've described it there, it doesn't necessarily matter if the features are coming in sprints or one at a time. Um, so I described the deployment manager as occasionally pushing out all the updates that have re reached him by that particular date, um, just so that, you know, for instance, so that your app on your phone isn't updating several times a day. Um, but so it it may well end up being that um, it's a question of team dynamics as to whether you have your team working for two weeks and then considering that the end of a sprint and going into a review mode of, so how did we do in the last two weeks? or whether they are just kind of pushing features out as they come. And so it's more a question of the flow of features through to the product.